Do what? I'm going to try to as much as I can. No, I'm just Right. 
I'm a small business owner and I have a stake in the community of New York City. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? My name is Tamika Williams Obey. Can you hear me? Okay, is that a little bit better? Okay, good evening, everyone. First, my name is Tamika Williams Obey. I'd like to take this time to first thank Mr. Scott Harper and Gab News for allowing us to have this forum tonight. Um, along with that, thanking the historic, beautiful Winyell Auditorium and the Board of Directors. Um, with that being said, I want to thank community for being here. It's a cold night, and I appreciate you all coming out to hear my platform along with my opponent. A little bit about me. I am a wife, a mother. I am the daughter of Gerald C. Williams and the late Lola Wright Williams, both retired Georgetown Public School educators. I am also the granddaughter of Reverend Elmore Williams and the late Prolethea Dentley Williams. I am a, well, I am the Outreach Coordinator for St. James Health and Wellness, and we service all of Georgetown County. So a little bit about myself. I am a community connector, a bridge builder. That's what I do. I reach back into my community and I try to give back. I am here to serve you. I'm excited about this opportunity to serve you in all capacities, all neighborhoods, not just one specific neighborhood. I take this opportunity very serious. Uh, being a public servant is not an easy task. I'm committed to servicing everyone. I'm committed to doing the, the work, to research, to find out what's needed and how we can bring our city stronger, bring it together. Thank you. This is not directed to any candidate, so it's a road to vote. Are you a member of the JT? No, I'm not. I'm a member of the city of Georgetown. No particular team. I knew that question was coming tonight. No, I'm not a member of the JT. I am Kelly Johnson running as a Republican candidate for city council. I do represent a younger generation of Georgetown that needs to start playing a more active role in the governing and management of our city. I will work for all communities with council members, city officials, and citizens to do what promotes unity in our city and what serves the best interests of the people living in Georgetown. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Next question. This question is on affordable housing and it is not directed at either campus or for goals What is your position on this affordable housing? What is your plan? My position on affordable housing is we live in a mixed community of various social economic backgrounds. And I believe that the mixed community would have to have mixed affordable housing subsidized housing as well as single family homes. Um, it's my prayer that we can elevate those who wish to be in a single family home, but we have to meet people where they are. As our community changes, we have to be able to change with the times and with the structure of our community. So single family homes as well as subsidized housing is definitely a part of what I believe in. Thank you, Ms. Morgan. Ms. Johnson. I'm very aware and understand the need for more housing options in our city. We have a population of almost 8,300 residents. There are currently 799 subsidized residential dwellings in the city limits. Broken down, this translates into roughly 10% or 830 residents of our population residing in subsidized housing at the moment. Recently, there was a presentation to council outlining the prospects of privately developed affordable housing complex on Lincoln Street. It's in the very early stage of the discussion, but it's definitely moving in the right direction. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Next question. And again, for anyone who is coming late or if there is a response that is given by your candidates that 
Pause some questions. Raise your hand. I'm sure you're trying to get that stuff. This question is not directed to either candidate, so it will go to both. What can be done about our rising utility bills? Well, let's start with this job. I wish I could tell you there would not be any more increases in utilities. But there's always going to be rate increases, and there's always going to be fees associated with it. Believe me, I completely understand the anxiety when you get that city of Georgetown envelope in the mail every month. It hurts your wallet. But because there have been no incremental increases in rates in the past several years, the recent increases we've seen has made it a harder pill to swallow for most of us. Half of the city's operating budget is supported by utilities. Unfortunately, the city is legally unable to subsidize a person's utility bill. However, I noticed that on the agenda for the city council meeting on Thursday, they're going to be voting on a program that's a utility roundup program that will provide, the, provide utility assistance for residents in need, and I am in full favor of this. So this is my position with the rising utility rates. We all are feeling it. It doesn't matter what race you are, what socioeconomic status you are in. We all are feeling raise, right, I guess, a raise in the, the rates. My first issue I would do is I would try to renegotiate with our supplier, making contact with the supplier to see if that is even possible. Secondly, we have to look at all areas of this. There may be an issue where we can talk about property taxes. I don't know. Um, there's always a period of discovery. This is a new role for me. A lot of these uh, issues have been in the pipeline before becoming an elected official, before taking on this role. So I would work with council, our current mayor, and to try to have, bring some result to it. But I would first go with the renegotiation process of our current electric supplier. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Well, we're going to get back for the next question. If there's anyone that thought of one, please raise your hand and remove your card. Um, in fairness to the candidates and to the audience, this question is what is your plan for affordable housing? I do believe that we Okay. Both candidates. And this may seem rudimentary, but I guess it's necessary for some. To both candidates, please verify, please verify that you live in the city. Fair enough. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> yes, I currently live in Maryville on Spruce Street. It can be checked with any city or public records uh, community. Lived there for the last 10 or 15 years. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. And I, too. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I do live in the city of Georgetown. Uh, my address is uh, on Palm Street. So I live in the neighborhood that I grew up in. So I definitely live in the city of Georgetown. And I have to apologize to you and so hard, but it's kind of hard to make the interest of the reaction. Next question is it's not addressing the one, so it's going to go to the other. How would you like to see the West End? Redevelop. Let's start with this, Johnson. Well, I think that kind of goes into my community outreach and support um, views. I believe we need to promote, promote ongoing neighborhoods and unity in all of Georgetown, not just one neighborhood over another. We all reside in the city 
the end of the meeting thinking of our reform. All of our neighborhoods need options for residents, more specifically the youth, to enjoy a common location to meet and gather and engage in activities. My immediate role on city council would be to sit with county representatives and work together to discuss the expansion of operating hours for a county run community center event. Um, I realize that budget constraints and staffing issues do play a role in this. Um, I look forward to a partnership with the city, the state, and the county to improve these offerings. And as I stated earlier, there was already a number of 799 subsidized housing. Um, the Lincoln Street would be a proposal to be a privately developed affordable housing. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Can you repeat the question so I'm clear? Certainly. Question reads How would you like to see the West End redeveloped? Sure. Uh, the West End is historically a predominantly African American neighborhood uh, with a lot of vitality. A lot of wonderful people there. And the first thing I would do is meet with the residents of the West End, the community elders and community influencers and advocates in that area. Secondly, we would have a conversation about what do we want to see. It's not a it's not an I thing. I can want so many things for the West End, but the residents who actually reside there, they have a stake in what they want as well. But what I would say is looking at a short-term and long-term goals. Sometimes we get so excited about what we want to see in one particular neighborhood that it's, it's overwhelming. So let's start with short-term goals. Let's have five goals that we can try to obtain the first of the year. Maybe if we can't get to the five goals, we can do at least three. But let's start with a short-term goal. Let's continue to have the conversation with workshops and community members in the West End, engage with them. And then we can also engage with council and with the mayor and other representatives of the city. But the first step is finding out what the West End wants. So, because I can't come into your neighborhood and tell you what you need. You can do that, but I don't think that's a good conversation to have. I'd like to have a conversation with the residents there, starting there, and then working towards solutions. And this is ongoing, not just a one and done. If you can't see who you're serving, you can't hear them. So, throughout this campaign, I have been in every neighborhood in the city consistently throughout this campaign. I've talked with thank you. I've talked with residents, I've heard their cry, and I'm committed to service. Thank you. May I add to that please? Um, on the topic of communication and outreaching into the neighborhoods to find out what the residents want and need, what's important to them, there have been neighborhood meetings established and will be ongoing in every neighborhood. There's already been one in Miracle and the West End this year. Um, as a council member, I will continue to work with the mayor and be present at all neighborhood mm -hmm. meetings that are held. Thank you. Next question. question goes to both candidates. How can you promote fiscal transparency for the city? Again, how can you promote fiscal transparency for the city? Start with this one. Sure. The way to promote physical transparency is to be transparent. <laughs> so, I mean, that's where you start first. Um, of course, there's a discovery period in this role. Um, again, I'm going to do, 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 to do the research, I'm sorry, and to engage with residents. You ask a question, I will answer, um, as long as it's within the legalities of my role. Um, that's the best way that I can answer that. Thank you, Ms. Well, that happens to be one of my platform issues, is to continue the fiscal transparency and responsibility of city funds. I think the current administration has done an excellent job um, in promoting that and becoming transparent. It's our money. We need to know about every expenditure, every bit of income, how everything's allocated. Um, it needs to be an open book. There's no secrets, there's no hiding of any monies. And again, I would like to reiterate that the current administration has 
um, Eric and Dom the beginning of that process, and if it needs to continue, I'll have to take them out. This question goes to both candidates. Ladies, starting with Ms. Johnson, what is your opinion on the Liberty Steel issue? What is your opinion on the Liberty Steel issue? This has been this has been a hot topic for a long time. My position on this is ordinances aside, I grew up here. 
I would love nothing more than to see the mill back on its feet and running productively, once again becoming a viable employer for our Georgetown veterans. That being said, it's a privately owned entity, so my role if I'm elected to council at this point will simply be to advocate the enforcement of the zoning regulations as they affect Liberty Seal as I would with any other business. Side note to that is I did read yesterday's press release that stated Liberty Steel just received a new $40 million term loan to help refinance an existing $125 million loan that will be maturing in January of 23. I'm very interested to see how Liberty Steel chooses to appropriate these funds. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Sure. Um, Liberty Steel is a business, just like any other business within the city of Georgetown. They have a right to operate um, as long as they're following the rules of the city. Liberty Steel employs a great number of individuals. They provide livable wage jobs, and that goes back into our city. I am for Liberty Steel. I'm a part of the Board of Zoning and Appeals, and I voted for, for it to remain open. I stand by that. I would like to see them hire and employ more individuals. Um, within the city. They provide livable wages and we need them and I support them. Thank you, Liz. Next question. <laughs> this question goes to both candidates. Ladies. What type of recreation would you like to see the city have? Again, the question reads, what type of recreation would you like to see the city have? Starting with this question. Sure, I'd like to see a community pool. I think having a community pool would be great. We are a coastal town. Uh, we are the third oldest city in the state of South Carolina. And I think we have a lot of children who don't know how to swim. So a community pool would be great for adults as well as the youth. Secondly, I like to see a sensory park. We have a lot of families here that have children on the autism spectrum. We have, have disabilities that you can't see sometimes. I think that we need to be more inclusive of those families and incorporate some sensory parks for them here. But my two issues would be a community pool and a sensory park for our families that have children on the autism spectrum. That's a start. There's more, but that would be a start for me. Again, speaking with residents and having community workshops and conversations, but I'd like to start there. Thank you, Ms. Olivia. I do agree with the, my opponent. A uh, sensory park would be an excellent idea. That's something that we're lacking, um, that things get overlooked frequently. Um, as far as the community pool, I believe there is one at the YMCA that is available to all residents. Um, we live on the coast. We have five rivers dumping into our harbor. We're a recreational town. We have the um, Dixie Youth Baseball. There are numerous basketball programs, soccer programs, the upward programs that a lot of churches sponsor. Um, we have a lot of community activities and recreation available. But again, the sensory park would be a great addition to that. I'd like to add on to that or to respond. Uh, we do have a pool, but that is in the county. I'm referring to the city of Georgetown. And so that is what I would push for for a community pool within the city limits of Georgetown. Thank you. Next question. In all fairness to the candidates and to the audience, All parents of the audience, candidates, we have had this question. We decided to do previously. We would like to bypass it if it was answered sufficiently. But the question reads What are we going to do about the high light? Next question.
this question would be one that potentially has been addressed before as well. And we will uh, leave it to the audience to decide and we can reduce. The question reads, if elected, what is your vision for economic development in the Western community? Uh, help revitalize that community in order to help ourselves. Uh, is it fair enough to say that you would address that? I heard it out. I heard it out. Development. I heard an answer to development, but I'm not in the audience. So, candidates, if you would, for 30 seconds. Is that fair? Sure. Can you please address development in the West End? Ms. Obey, 30 seconds. Sure. Again, as I said, the West End is historically predominantly African American neighborhood. My first step would be able to engage with the residents to find out what they want to see as far as academic, economic development. And then from there, we can work together to try to get things done. I can't make empty promises, and I can't do anything alone. I need you to help me. Tell me what you want. Tell me what you want to see, whether it's an arts program, whether it's rezoning issues. We have to have a conversation. Ms. Johnson, 30 seconds. As I said earlier, the neighborhood meetings and the communities are an essential tool to finding out what the residents of each neighborhood needs, what their, their requests are, ideas, thoughts, and inputs. I would advocate to continue those as they've been going on this year and be present in all of them. Um, it's really the starting point for that. And again, I, I don't like to single out one community over another. Georgetown is comprised of multiple neighborhoods. And moving on to the next question. Having been in politics in Georgetown for a long time, this is why I have to go to the cloud. This question goes to both candidates. Are you in favor of single member districts? Why or why not? I'll start with you, Ms. Johnson. Single member districts as they apply to county politics? No ma'am. This, this question, and I'll stop the time for now, but this question would be in relation, I don't know who wrote the question, but I would imagine uh, that this question would be in direct relation to the city and creating single member districts in the city. Am I correct in that presumption? Whoever wrote it? Yes. All right. Okay. So as I understand the question, um, you, someone would like to see each individual voting district have a representative of its own. I don't advocate that. I honestly would prefer to have talk the political parties out of our local politics altogether. Uh, Georgetown needs to be represented by the citizens and not driven by one party or another in their extreme views. I think we need to come together and citizens work together as citizens and residents of Georgetown and do what's best for our citizens. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Ms. Okay. Sure, I'd like to have more information on the topic. In all honesty, I won't give you a answer because I don't have all the information. I'd like to do more research and find out what will benefit our citizens and give you the best answer after my research is done. Thank you both. Next one. Thank you. Very pensive question. Why did you decide to run Falls starting in this year? Thank you for that question. That's simple for me. Um, to whom much is given, much is required. 
This city has been extremely good to myself along with my family for decades. I'm a third generation Georgetonian. I've lived all around the state of, uh, all different states as a former flight attendant. So I've traveled extensively throughout the world. And lastly in Chicago, that's where I lived for about 15 years. Coming back to home was a no brainer for me. Um, coming back, but not just wanting to have a job, wanting to actually give back to my community. And I'm doing that as an outreach coordinator. For me, this is something that I'm passionate about. I go to sleep at night thinking about what I can do better for my city, for my community. I work hard in my profession. I work hard in this elected position that I've afforded the opportunity. Service is a hard job, but I'm committed to it. I'm committed to speaking with you on a day-to-day -day basis and holding me accountable, trying to make things better. Our city is beautiful. We have a wonderful city, but we can do better. We can always do better. I strive for excellence in my profession, my personal life, and I'll strive for excellence in this role as well. So this was just something that's a part of me. My family has been a family of service for generations, and I want to continue that legacy. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. I'm a small business owner, and I have a stake in the community and a stake for the city's residents. <clears throat> I like to give back and help those where I can. I feel like it's my generation's turn, um, 50. It's our turn to start stepping up and taking a more active role in the governing of the community, as I stated earlier. Um, we need to be more active. I offer a fresh perspective. and. Uh, just feel like we need some fresh blood in there. Thank you, Rose. Y'all trust me to move the next question? Yes. Listen, what says the car? What says the Out 
Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Ms. Robin. Sure. In regards to jobs, we live in a small town. I would first start with our established business owners. I would actually try to look at recruiting, recruiting um, what we have here. We have wonderful talent here in the city of Georgetown. But as far as jobs, it's going to be hard to bring major industries, and that's going to be a period of time. That won't be a, a quick fix solution that we have to get the industries here. So we want to start looking at our small business owners and letting them know that there's talent in Georgetown. So and putting them maybe a mentorship program so that they know that if there's a job opportunity, you have talent here within the city. You don't have to go outside of Georgetown to have a decent job. But I think there's a disconnect sometimes that people just don't know. So we have to do a better job of getting the information out there. Whether it's with workshops, community resources, or churches, whatever it is, we have to go above and beyond what we're doing because there obviously is a disconnect. Thank you. Next question. Do you think or believe that there is a racial divide in the city of Georgia? Definitely. I'd like to elaborate on that. I think, as I said earlier, you cannot help someone if you can't see them. It seems to me is that as a community outreach worker, I have the, the wonderful job of going out to communities. And it seems to me is that our communities are divided with neighborhoods. One neighborhood is over here, one neighborhood is over here. Obviously, you move to Georgetown because you love the city. But we have to have more of a cohesive relationship with one another. What's going on in Willow Bay? I want to know. What's going on on the West End? I want to know. What's going on in Maryville? I want to know. I think we have to get to the mindset of being each other's keeper. What's happening in your neighborhood is also my business. And what's going on in my neighborhood is your business as well. We have to come together and be more cohesive as a community, not just as a neighborhood. Things are great over in one neighborhood, in another neighborhood things are, are not so great. That can't be. I think we all have the common goal of making Georgetown better. So that starts with us acknowledging that there is a problem. First, and with the racial divide, it's more conversation, honest conversation. It's all about diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have Hispanic individuals here. I don't see anyone from that community represented here tonight. That has to change. So there's an elephant in the room. We have to reach the size, get out of our comfort zone. This isn't just a black or white issue. You know, we're a beautiful city. We have a lot to offer. Sorry. Ms. Johnson, do you think there's a racial divide in the city of I feel like to promote the unity that we're both speaking of, we need to work together. And by continuing to ask questions along these lines and talking about there being racial divisions, it promotes further division. We need to put that behind us and move forward. We all need to work together as one, all races. But we don't need to keep bringing it up. It needs to be put behind us and let us move forward. Can I respond? 30 seconds. We can't put it behind us. It's our reality. It, it, it's our reality. It's uncomfortable, but we have to have open dialogue about it. And that may be, you know, a little offensive sometimes. We don't want to offend. We want to learn. We want to be able to understand each other better. But we have to have open and honest conversation. We can't see things under the rug. Our community is changing. It's growing. We want to be a welcoming community to everyone. But we do have problems. Next question. Thank you. I don't know if you all are part of it or not tonight, but the buzzword has been growing. Growing. I remember several years ago, Lead story in the Atlanta Journal Constitution read that by 2025, 40% of the American population is living in the South. That was 16 years ago. 
and now we find ourselves being deluged by folk who are not from here, but find the beauty and the attractiveness of this place, so much so that they want to move here. So the next question is both is which reads, do you support annexing Merv and the King's anything into the city? And why? Starting with these four. That's a serious question, and that's not a quick fix answer. I think my first is you'll be able to talk to the residents in those communities and see what they want. Again, you don't want to come into a community and just tell them what they're going to get. So I am for conversation. I am for open dialogue with the residents of Maryville and Kingsington and what's going to be the best solution for the city and the residents. Um, but there isn't a, a quick solution to that. Maryville is a city. Kingsington isn't. So, you know. This one. For those of you that were slow moving like me, you didn't get it. Uh, Kensington isn't. No, Maryville is isn't. Kensington is. Well, the question is asked. It's the question. Kensington. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of that would rely on the conversation with those residents of Kensington. Um, this has been a, a conversation um, going, I would assume, within that community for several years. But I think now it's time for my opponent to answer and to respond to that question. Ms. Johnson, how do you support and actually Kinsey into this? That was going to be my first point is that Maryville's are in city limits. There's no annexation involved there. Um, again, it would be up to the citizens, the residents of Kensington. My pharmacy is located in Kensington. So I service the majority of those residents there locally. I think it would benefit a sign for that. Um, it would bring in more tax dollars and more revenue into our city's budget if we could do that. Um, now the residents may be opposed to it for those same reasons, but I think they would also benefit by being able to participate and take advantage of the utilities that we offer and other services. Thank you, Mrs. Bogan. And Ms. Johnson, next question. What is your previous experience in business management and budget starting with this council? I happen to be very experienced in my area. Um, <coughs> I've worked for large grocery chains, large pharmacy chains, worked at corporate level management, where I've been in charge and oversaw $20 million budgets. Um, 70 plus pharmacist employees, they're very hard to manage, by the way. Um, 35 stores all over the state of South Carolina and a few located in Georgia. I currently run a small business where I employ a team of pharmacists and other technicians. I'm solely responsible for operating that budget. Um, part of my jobs are with compliance with federal and state regulations, holding us accountable to for spending, for purchasing, for payroll, for waste, for income. Um, excuse me. But I think I'm very well qualified and have many years of experience in that area where if you're accountable as a business, I've been a business owner for a while and running the city is essentially my job in the business. Thank you, both. Next question. I, I didn't respond, so. Oh. I it's okay. It's okay. Um, I am not a business owner, but I work for a business. I work for a fairly qualified health care center where I've had the privilege to actually help obtain grants. Um, for me, I feel that I'm very intelligent. I know that I'm very intelligent. So, although I don't have much experience with my opponent, I am more than up to, up to the challenge to learn how to read the budgets and to understand them. So I'm excited, I'm ready for the challenge. Thank you. Next question. Hmm. 
I think we addressed this earlier, but I have to ask this question a little um, Okay, what is your position on real affordable housing in the city? It's what you Say again. We answer that sufficiently. Yeah. Moving on. Thank you. You don't have to put a smile. As a member of the city council, both questions, this is both candidates, I apologize. Would you be in favor of the city assuming emergency medical services, EMS, the city residents by establishing an EMS division within the city by department as a means to improve the critical response time to medical emergencies? Let me read that one more time. Let me read that two more times. As a member of the city council, would you be in favor? Of the city assuming emergency medical services or EMS for city residents by establishing an EMS division within the city fire department as a means to improve the critical response time to medical emergencies. Whoever wants to jump on that first, you're welcome. I'll take it. Um, that question is first, if it's going to benefit our residents. I would say yes, but in that yes, I want to find out what are our residents going to incur by accepting that. What's the what's the outcome for the residents? Is it going to be an increase in taxes? What's going to incur with that yes? So again, I would do my research and find out how our residents are going to benefit and what would what would be entailed with that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Johnson. Well, I believe the solution to that is to further provide resources for our fire department, our first responders. Uh, most of the fire department employees are trained as emergency medical technicians. I've assisted with various testing things they have to go through. Um, I think if we can increase the budget allowances for these services, then we would see a direct impact on the ability to, to respond quicker. Um, the county and EMS services are in place as well, but I think if we can work better with the fire department, increase the manpower and the resources, we can see an improvement in that. Thank you. Next question. Thank you. Vote candidates. If elected, what would you do to educate your town? If elected, what would you do to educate your staff? I'll take it. Um, the first thing is, I just love talking to the youth. Um, knowing them on a very personal level, I think it gives me an opportunity to be that bridge builder and that community connector. First, you have to develop trust and transparency. Uh, the youth can tell when you're not genuine. So again, meeting them where they are, finding out what's going on with them, encouraging them to volunteer in the city, encouraging them to come to events and to learn. Uh, our city is beautiful. We have a lot of opportunities, especially with St. James. We're always looking for volunteers. Quick plug. Um, but in, in regards to that, I think that our youth here, they want to be involved, but they don't know how to. So it's, again, that disconnect with generation. Um, you know, sometimes you just have to go where they are. They won't come to you all the time. So go out to the basketball court, go out to where they are, and just have a conversation. Let us start with a conversation first, and then go back, and go back again and again. You have to be consistent and persistent. Um, so again, they can feel that they are, they have a trust relationship with you. So I'm that you're genuine. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. As I understand the question, um, city council is not responsible for education. That responsibility falls under the county and the school board of education. However, I do feel it's important that we work together with the county and the school district to enhance the lives and the future of our children. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Next question. Uh, 
Right, so we've seen this question before. We had it answered, but in fairness, can you attend to the audience of readings? As a member of city council, would you be supportive of the city? Exploring your prospects for annexing suburban communities slash areas, missing out on the city's current borders to the north, west, and south. We're good? So now y'all want to be quiet. Y'all need to sleep now. Where's that? Y'all good? Oh. Don't go to sleep on me now. This question is from Kenny's. Do you support using our tax dollars in an effort to force any business to shut down? If so, what does the city accomplish if the landowner refuses to sell the property? And how does a shutdown facility left unattended increase property value? I'll read it one more time. Do you support using our tax dollars? In an effort to force any business to shut down? If so, what does the city accomplish if the landowner refuses to sell the property? And how does the shutdown facility, left unattended, increase property value? Ms. Johnson. Uh, certainly, sure. Um, I'm not sure that's not really the issue here. Um, we should not use tax dollars to force any business, we can't use them to force any business to close its doors or shut down. Thank you, Ms. Johnson, Ms. O'Bain. Sure. Um, can you read the first part of the question again? Sir? As a member of the city council, mm -hmm. do you support using our tax dollars in an effort to force any business to shut down? If so, what does the city accomplish with the land to sell the property? How does the shutdown facility that unfit increase the property value? I do not support using our tax dollars to close down any business. As long as that business is morally in good standing, it's not causing havoc on our community. I don't see why it would why it would need to be closed or why it needs to be shut down. Um, I would look at all points of that issue uh, with council, with the mayor, and uh, come to a resolution. But I don't see where we would have to use our tax dollars to shut business down. Um, if it's in morally good standing, it's not causing any type of issues for our community. Thank you both. Next question. Uh, I'm going to read the question. <laughs> then y'all bark with me before you start raising your hand. Then y'all have to talk about me being the city of New York. But I'm going to read it because I don't remember the specificity of this in a previous question. But to both candidates, do you support the 40% increase in the electric bill? I don't support it. They didn't ask why. They didn't ask the why. They supported the location. Let's give 30 seconds to answer this question. I'll read it again. You support the 40% increase. Is it fair to say, and we have the mayor and the majority now, two members of council. We're happy. Is the, is the city increasing by 40% of the utility bill? Yes. It is. So the question reads it's both candidates. So the question is, do you support it and why? 
You have 30 seconds to answer that question. You started with this one. I do not support an increase. I do understand that as the city grows, and we do have to look at other alternatives. Um, it's a hard, tough decision. It, it, it's just hard. But again, there is a discovery period coming. Once elected, looking at what's, in the, what's already in the pipeline, how am I going to work with council and the community to help bring about resources to ease the burden that our residents are feeling, all residents. So it has to be discussed. There has, there has to be. Right. Thank you. Next question. I apologize. I apologize. Johnson, you have 30 seconds. I apologize. Um, we did indirectly address this. As far as that figure of 40%, I, I don't know that that's correct. I have to wonder the rate increase versus the usage increase may seem like the total bill that's on the bottom line might appear to be a 40% increase as opposed to the actual rate being increased 40%. Don't, I'd have to research that and do some homework on it. Um, like I said earlier, it's a hard thing to solve. Thank you. Um, in transparency, and now to kind of expedite time just a bit, Mr. Winley is going to vet the rest of the questions, make sure that there are no duplicates. We would like to get everyone's question in and answered, but we would also like to be efficient with our time. Mr. Winley? So the ones that are not duplicates are just sit here, and the ones that are, I'll send them back to that part of the chair. Next question. Should, this goes to both candidates. Should public speaking be placed back at the beginning of the council's agenda? And why? Ms. Okay. Sure, I definitely feel like it should be placed back at the beginning. Um, I am not sure what the rhyme or reason was for placing it at the end. Um, I do believe that it was done intentionally. Um, I think that by it being done that way, you lose a lot of individuals um, support from coming to these meetings. Of course, we have responsibilities outside of the attending meetings. We have families, we work, and so when members of the community take their time to come out to a council meeting and they have to um, be told that they're going to be speaking at the end, that's a little disheartening. And I feel that it's a way um, to actually alienate a, a certain demographic. I don't understand why it was taken away. Um, I do believe there are protocols when you attend these meetings, and as followed, and as we go into the meetings with um, knowing what's ahead of us, and we abide by the rules, um, that we should be able to put that public comment section back to where it was. Thank you, Bo. No? Ms. Johnson. Ms. Johnson. Ms. Johnson. Please know at this point it's not intentional. So we're we'll teaching all of it. <laughs> Let's go. Um, I'm not aware of when that change occurred. I would have to do more homework to give you a more informed answer. Um, I would have to guess, though, that maybe in the essence, the essence of efficiency, because we all know how public speaking can keep going on and on and on in order to make the meeting process more efficient because whatever is on the agenda can be run through pretty quickly and then allow all the time at the end for speaking. Uh, that's just human nature. People tend to get carried away with things. So I would assume that was the intent for that. So I'd like to see it just be heard. Um, in the end, I think maybe it would make more sense. Ms. Johnson, thank you. Uh, Ms. O'Brien, I'll read the question again. Yeah. Should public speaking be placed back at the beginning? I, I answered it. I just had a question. Yeah. yeah. It was okay, but I, I responded. I just wanted to know do you, to my opponent, do you feel that it should be placed back at the beginning or at the end? I wasn't clear with your response. No, I, the very last thing I said was I, I kind of agree with it being at the end. Okay. 
just in these the, for efficient reasons, efficiency reasons, okay. to keep things moving along. Not because I don't need to be heard or that people's time is less important than council members, but I do understand how things can get carried away and that the meeting would be held up a little further. Sure, we can agree to disagree. I believe we should be at the beginning, the way it was. You're good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next question. This round, ladies and gentlemen, will be the C round. 30 seconds uh, first, class. 30 seconds first. I have one. Uh, well, this is one of the first. This is a 30 second question. The city has now passed. An ordinance that puts cultural uh, initiatives back at the forefront in the city of Georgia. You're standing or sitting in the historic winter auditorium, which is cultural art center. What are your personal positions on city council supporting the cultural arts in the city of Georgia? Miss Open. Sure. I believe that art is important. It's, um, it's again, a bridge builder, community connector. Um, we all have a love of art, whether it's music, entertainment, we need the arts. I would like to see council uh, do more, and especially in underserved areas with the arts as well. Thank you, Mr. Ben. Ms. Johnson? I fully support um, cultural arts and, and allowing for that in budgeting and passing ordinance. That's what makes us well-rounded people. We don't need to be about our business. Um, our history, we need to embrace it. Um, different cultures and everything that comes along with that and educating everyone in the community. Thank you, both. Next question. In regards to recreation, Ms. Johnson, the programs you mentioned, to those children whose parents can afford extracurricular activities, what about those who cannot afford Dixie, Lee, or the YMCA? Well, that's just examples, actually, throughout. Um, the community centers that are in place, like the Beck Community Center, I don't believe there's any charge for that at any time. Uh, uh, sorry, the Beck Community Center, um, I don't believe there's any charge for that of any kind. There's a Howard Community Center, Nittany Project, there's a couple of parks in Bayview, excuse me, Bayview, East Bay Park. There are options for people for activities. Um, now, granted, we need to. Ms. Uh, sure. Uh, I think my comment is referring to the Park and Recreational Center um, at uh, J.D. Beck Center. Um, can you just elaborate on the question? I just want to make sure that I heard you correctly. Question asked In regards to recreation that Johnson was talking about, programs are those children whose parents do not or can't afford extracurricular activities um, like Dixie or the YMCA. What about those who can? Exactly. Um, for those individuals who can afford programs, that's where we go into our community resources. Their programs, such as the Village Center uh, with Mr. Ray Funny, who does an awesome job of actually taking kids from the city out to the Punisville community throughout, throughout the summer. He's just one. Um, but there are other avenues. I can't wish you all of them, but as an outreach coordinator, that's part of my job to find them um, and to work with community to help facilitate that. Whether your child is in elementary or high school, there are programs. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. <laughs> I'm not going to ask.
was really trying to answer the question, and now I'm on a fast track. I'm not too good at this. Go back. The question on the floor that I had, that I was not going to read, is to both candidates, is Joe Biden going to be elected president of the United States? <laughs> <laughs> prayer after serious conversation with my family, particularly my father, um, it was a go. Throughout this process, I've learned a lot about myself and about community. We live in a wonderful community. And within the past, this week and a half, I got the pleasure to actually talk to, make some new friends, not even talk, but just make some new friends. And I'd like to acknowledge them. That's uh, Selma and his beautiful wife, Fatima. Um, who's actually become a very, um, kind of a conscious for me. Just met him one time, but has thought about what he said to me. My new little friend, who's not able to vote yet, she's 14. But again, I see her and I hear her as well. And then my friend Courtney. I met these four individuals within the past week, and I'm committed to servicing them along with you. I see you, I hear you, and I'm here to work for you. That's what I can promise you. I can't promise you that I'm going to lower anything or raise anything, but what I can promise you is that I will do the work. I will research and I will do my due diligence. I'm excited to serve my community, and um, we live in a beautiful city, 
and I'm just ready to take on new opportunities. And uh, thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you. 